Let's talk about Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, and the Hebrew Bible. I'm very excited for these two universes to collide. I'm a big uh, Marvel fan, and I also really enjoy the Hebrew Bible, obviously. I think this will be a fun conversation to have both of these happen at the same time. So if you like both of these types of content, you'll enjoy this. Uh, first off, I should say, spoiler alert. So if you have not seen the new Doctor Strange movie, and if you've not seen the WandaVision TV show, then you'll wanna push pause uh, because there'll be some spoilers as we have a conversation about this topic. So one of the major themes of the new Doctor Strange movie is happiness. Doctor Strange is asked multiple times, are you happy? And Wanda, she has her own journey of figuring out happiness. We learn from WandaVision, the TV show, and this movie, she wants nothing more than to be a mom. And that's what drives her so deeply to do everything that she does. In fact, I find her a very refreshing type of, I guess you could say villain character in this movie because she doesn't wanna take over the world. She doesn't want world power. She doesn't wanna destroy people. What she really just wants is to be a mom. And then on the other hand, Doctor Strange, he, uh, although saving the world, you can tell from the beginning of the movie, he really wants love. So we're gonna talk about happiness, both in Doctor Strange and also in the Hebrew Bible. How does the Hebrew Bible talk about happiness? Well, one of the words for happy uh, and happiness in the Hebrew Bible is the word ashrei. And there are multiple words for happy in biblical Hebrew, but one of the more important and interesting ones is ashrei. So we're gonna take a look at how this word is used in the Hebrew Bible. So the first thing I should mention is that ashrei is generally translated, uh, in many translations at least, as blessed, not happy. But if you look at the major lexicons of Hebrew, ashrei, happy, is the more primary definition that it has. And blessed is more of a secondary, subsidiary, possible understanding. There's a better word for blessed in biblical Hebrew, which comes from the root word barach, which you may have heard in certain songs or uh, even prayers in Judaism. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu, blessed are you, our God. So specifically, there are some really interesting psalms that begin with, happy is the person who, ashrei ha'ish asher, and it's really interesting to think about how do the Hebrew authors fill in that line? What would we expect? Before we even look at these verses, I would want you and me to think about how would we fit, finish that line? How would our culture finish that line? Let's start with Doctor Strange. How would the characters in that movie define happiness? Wanda, what is it to her? She, she would say happy is the person who has a family. This is what makes her such a compelling character because it's it's a good thing that she wants. I think her whole line though would be happy as the person who has a family no matter the cost. And as you see in the movie, she will literally travel through the multiverse and is willing to take over a different mother in order to have children. And by the end of the movie, we realize that she really changes her mind of happiness. She, the famous line I love in the movie where she says, I'm not a monster, I'm a mother. But at the end of the, toward the end of the movie, when she's looking at these two kids uh, with a different Wanda, she says, I'm not a monster, I'm, and she can't even finish the line. And she realizes it's not just at any cost to be a mother. So she changes slightly what her definition of happiness is. Doctor Strange, on the other hand, we see at the beginning of the movie, we learn that Doctor Strange, he would say probably, happy is the person who leaves everything behind to save the world. Uh, we see this in the wedding where he's attending Christine Palmer's wedding. This is the love interest. This is the person who he loved, but things never worked out between the two of them. So he's attending her wedding and he feels a, a lack on the inside. But during part of the wedding, an alien comes crashing in and he leaves and does the superhero thing. And this is a microcosm of the decisions that he's made in his life. And throughout this movie, he has some interesting interactions with this. So what is happiness? What does he pursue? Now, going back to us, how would we fill in the line? Happy is the person who, happy is the person who. I would love for you, based on your personal experience and maybe the experience of the way you grew up in your family or the way you think that our culture would answer that question. What do you think? 
How would we say, happy is the person who? So now let's dive into the Hebrew Bible. What does the Hebrew Bible have to say about happiness? Well, first I should say a lot. This is not going to be an exhaustive video covering everything. So we are specifically going to look at the Psalms that begin with happy is the person who. Uh, there are many Psalms that have this word in it, but we're gonna focus on those, specifically the first three where this happens. So let's dive into Psalm 1-1. Remember that uh, Ashrei, really uh, primarily means happy, uh, not so much blessed, although there's a lot of commonality between the two words. Happy is the person who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his or her delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he or she meditates day and night. So we see that the first time that the word happy appears, it's about not walking in paths of wickedness, but doing things according to God's way, walking in God's path, living a life that honors him. Important, by the way, the word law here, not the best translation, this is the Hebrew word Torah, Torah, uh, which refers to God's general guidance. So the second one is really interesting. It appears at the end of Psalm 2, and many scholars think that Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 were both placed at the beginning of the book of Psalms as a unified introduction. And Psalm 2 is a lot about God and the Messiah. And the very end, we see at Psalm 212, the very last line. So this is an interesting bookend here where the first phrase of Psalm 1 begins with Ashrei and the last part of Psalm 2 begins with Ashrei. Kiss the sun. There's some obvious messianic stuff going on here and you know, connecting to Jesus, I think, in the New Testament. Lest Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. So Psalm 2, you could say, happy is the person who acknowledges and recognizes the Messiah and who he is. And those who are not happy are the ones who reject him, who do not realize that he is the Messiah. So let's look at another one. Let's look at Psalm 32, which this Psalm begins the same way. We have, happy is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Literally, this is uh, the one uh, whose transgression is lifted and whose sin is covered. I like the concrete imagery there. And then it goes on, verse 2, Happy is the human against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. I find this very challenging because this is the idea that happy is the person whose sin is forgiven. And so this psalm, there are a couple challenging ideas that I think, at least challenging to our culture, that this means you have to admit two things, which is one, I have a problem, and two, I can't fix that problem on my own. I have sin and I need someone to forgive me. And that person is God. So some of these ideas are very countercultural. Yet the author of Psalms says, happy is the person whose sin is forgiven. Let's look at uh, maybe one last one, Psalm 41. This is a Psalm that also begins with Ashrei, happy is the person who. This one says, happy is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. Happy is one who considers this word maskil, notoriously difficult Hebrew word to translate, but this insinuates basically that you deal wisely with and appropriately with and in a good way with, we'll say. And so they use the word consider, okay? So blessed is the one who considers the poor. Often when we think about happiness, we think happiness is about me, right? What makes you happy? Now don't get me wrong, I think that there are some strands of thought that there's a false humility. Oh, woe is me. I'm the worst. I don't matter. Everyone else should just do whatever. And I'm laying down my life. And I think that's a really a misappropriation of what humility and selflessness actually look like. On the other hand, there's a lot of selfishness that comes in with the ideas of happiness. This idea that life is all about me. It's all about what makes me happy. And we spend all of our time just doing the things that we want to do and not thinking about others. So how interesting that this psalm highlights happy is the person who considers the poor. Uh, when you look at some of the other psalms that begin with Ashrei, happy is the person, many of them have to do with happy is the person who fears God, who is upright, who walks in the ways of the Lord. And so this idea of orienting your entire life around God 
This, this kind of dovetails into wisdom literature, by the way. This is a picture, at least some part of a picture, of how some of the Hebrew authors in the Psalms look at happiness. And so let's look over those again. We could basically summarize them by happy is the person that doesn't walk in paths of wickedness, but instead walks in God's ways. Happy is the person who recognizes the Messiah and takes refuge in him. Happy is the person who has no deceit in them. They recognize they have a sin problem and they go to God as the one who's the answer to forgive them of their sin. And happy is the person who considers the poor, who looks outside of themselves to take care of others. So there's a quick look at an idea of happiness. We started with Dr. Strange and we ended up in the book of Psalms. This was by no means an exhaustive uh, look at the idea of happiness in the Hebrew Bible, but it's just a place to start. In fact, I hope this is a conversation starter. I would love to see you in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the idea of happiness in the new Doctor Strange movie? And also, what are your ideas, your thoughts on happiness from your personal experience or from your own Bible study? Put in the comments below. If you wanna see more content like this, hit subscribe, like, and share this video with other people it's for us to get the word out there. And also consider supporting us on Patreon, uh, where you can help us continue to do more things like this, as well as get exclusive videos such as live Bible studies. Thanks for joining me in this video. We'll see you in the next one.